Yeah, the colors are amazing. Good morning, welcome. Sabah. <laughs> Hello, I'm James and this is the Winging It Travel Podcast. In 2023, I spent a year travelling the world with my girlfriend, Emma. Join me as I take a look back over our epic trip and remember to like and subscribe to keep up with our adventures. Hello and welcome to this week's episode. I joined a tour with Viagans 100 Rota, which is a tour operator out of Portugal. And they have small group tours of Lebanon and it's run by the local guide, Jao Salso. And for this episode, I am showcasing Beirut. Let's get stuck in. I decided to fly two nights before the tour starts. And I got picked up at the airport by a guy called Hussein. It's gonna be a popular name in this episode. who told me all about the stuff I should know about Beirut and why he loves the place. He dropped me off at the Grand Meshmosh Hotel, which is situated on Garod Street, which is very close to the port area, which you may have heard of. And I instantly loved the hostel vibe, great rooms, Wi-Fi, drinks and food, and a very nice place to start my trip in Lebanon. One thing to note here is the exchange rate. On the street, it can vary between 100,000 and 150,000 to one. So make sure you bring cash and dollars but you can exchange for that street value at a hostel or hotel. So I've got $50 worth and went down out to Gore Street, which had trendy Western cafes and bars. And I plopped myself in Urbanista for a coffee and brunch. For the rest of the evening, I waited for Francisco, who owns the tour group, to come in with his group, and Jao was part of that too. And I got to meet Angela Santos, who goes by Blonde Around the World and is a creative friend of mine online. And we had great laughs, great drinks, and great food. A very pleasant evening. The day after was not an official day of the tour, but a few of us were at the hostel early, so we decided to head out into Beirut, and Jao joined us for a pre-tour tour of Beirut, and there were a few stragglers from the Syria tour, such as Pietro and Jose, and straight away as we set off to explore, I could see the devastation from the port explosion many years ago. A lot of the buildings have not been repaired. The ones that had probably had money, so they could repair themselves. But as we know, the locals got no help from the government. And as you can see here, this huge building was a government building and that was immediately abandoned. So if they're not going to help their own buildings, they're not going to help other people's either. And as you can see, instantly the artwork on the walls will showcase the Lebanese thoughts on the current situation with that port explosion. And we then started to stroll along Garoud, seeing the artwork and colours of Beirut. And then we walked along the port road called Charles Halou. And you can see the real destruction in the distance there in the background and you can't imagine the force that this created when it exploded a few years ago and one of the strongest non-nuclear explosions to date. One of the main attractions in Beirut is the Mohammed Al Amin Mosque which sits there in all its glory so grand and impressive in Martyrs Square where you'll see lots of statues and we even got a chance to pop inside after the prayers had finished. This is not normally allowed, but Jao had some contact in there who allowed us in for a couple of minutes. And just look at this spectacular and peaceful view in here. Look at those colors. A part of this tour is going into areas not recommended by the tourist or government websites. Our tour guide Jao had a lot of connections and we were safe to go in pretty much anywhere we want. So the first place we went to was called Bachura. This is next to the Digital Nomad and American University area and it's kind of known for being a bit dangerous by the Lebanese, but we went straight into there and we had lunch at Hussein's cafe. And despite Hussein being a Shia Muslim, he was very happy to help people eat their food for lunch and offer drinks and alcohol as well. Great food, a great guy. We started to wander back towards the hostel and as you can see, the very colorful houses on the streets of Beirut are from the colonial French era. They're quite nice, quite hip. And this yellow house is absolutely awesome. Look at that camper van outside dreamy you meet certain characters in beirut and we dropped into some local frenchman's guitar shop had a little strum on the chords love that and after a long first day of walking and a great introduction into what's to come we transferred to another hotel called the mayflower and finished the day off with a debrief and some great traditional lebanese food at t marbuta the next day was the official start of the tour and the rest of the Portuguese contingent had arrived into the hotel and the hotel served an English breakfast to the amusement of the Portuguese contingent. So a great start to the day and we took a walk to explore the impressive art in the city. Some very powerful meetings as you can see here. And the next on our itinerary was the Barakat building and it's also known as Sniper's Lair 
and is important for both Christians and the Muslims during the Civil War. And right next to it is the Tower of Death and you can see the bullet holes in this building and these are timely reminders of the grimness of war. We headed back to the Martyr Square area to check out the St. George Greek Orthodox Cathedral which is next to the Muhammad Al Amin Mosque. And next to it is these strange shopping areas called the Beirut Souks. Hardly any shops exist, they're expensive shops and are also guarded by the authorities. And we're allowed to walk amongst the area with no one there, just an eerie feel with some Roman ruins chucked in between those religious buildings. Another interesting landmark next to that is called the Egg. This is an unfinished cinema complex which was abandoned during the Civil War and during the protests in 2019-2020 this was used to discuss the WhatsApp revolution and as of today it's filled with bullet holes and pigeons. started to come so we headed towards the National Museum which has some great artifacts inside and gives you a great idea of the history of the area and the country. Again there's more art on the streets as we see famous artists and musicians represented. And let's take another look at my favourite house in Beirut. We headed back to the area of Bachura to meet one of the oldest people in Beirut, he's called Hassan, and he is over 100 years old and has 75 grandchildren. The amount of history he has in his house is incredible. Thanks for the coffee, and here's a photo. To finish the day, Jao took us to the Shatila area in southern Beirut which houses a refugee camp and is also the site of the Shatila massacre. We got to hear about the history and the current conditions of this place by our local guide Aya and she took us to a Palestinian museum which housed more incredible history and thanks Aya for tea and sharing your stories. A lot to take in for this day as we headed back to base and had dinner at Tima Buta again and look at the ridiculous counting of this money. Next morning was another English breakfast in the bank and this is the last full day in Beirut and next up is the social media famous Fuck You building or formerly known as the Grudge building and it was built by a brother to obstruct his other brother's view of the ocean just because of a grudge. It's 13 feet wide at its widest point and 2 feet wide at its narrowest. You can technically live in there and it is the thinnest building in Beirut. Then we dipped in to see another side of the city by going to see the Yacht Club and Marine at Zaytuna Bay, which again shows the potential wealth of this place. And then it's back to the Souks area and we saw some expensive shops open this time but of course no one in there and got a photo at the I Love Beirut sign. We headed back around to the Martyr Square area where the parliament buildings are and we got embroiled in a protest from many of the older generation who had not been paid their pensions, they were not happy and many of them are ex-servicemen and I could sense some tension in the air. The army was ready with the water cannons and before it kicked off the rain came and no one was having that so everyone went home. After a few photos and some chats with the locals at the protest, we headed out to another area of the city called Borj Hamoud. This is the Armenian area. We walked past the Set Vatanants church before walking through the streets of a bustling area. I've got a super trendy coffee on the street. Check this out. England. 
Oh, does he? Oh, yeah, yeah. For lunch, we were hosted by someone called RP, who invited us into a house and community centre. We sat in awe of her tales as she explained how her family were forced to leave Armenia and settle in Lebanon. The energy was special, some hugs, some tears, so I gave her a hug and got a photo, a fantastic lunch, and I love the conversations in this, but so, so full. You're never going to go hungry in Lebanon. The portions are huge. The plethora of options is insane. And trust me, you need to have an empty stomach for it. This time we walked back to the hotel via the road a bit closer to the port area. And here you can see the messages on the wall. It is fair to say that people are not happy with the current situation. And the number of people who died in this accident is absolutely terrible. And add to that the ongoing struggle to get compensation for the billions of dollars worth of damage. It's just an awful, awful situation by an incompetent government. A lot to take in. And as I mentioned earlier, we are here in Ramadan. So we got treated to a fantastic iftar meal in the most glorious of settings. The only down point is we were so full from lunch that we couldn't really tuck in all that much to the food. We'd done the best we could and it was a great way to finish the day. The next morning was glorious and before heading down to Cider to continue the tour, we got out at the iconic Pigeon Rock and walked along the Corniche. Now the Corniche is a place in Beirut and Lebanon where anyone can come and walk. There's no prejudice or division amongst the people. You can be anything in terms of religion, sexuality, political biases. Everyone is equal and respected. And it's a much needed space for what seems like a divided country. And the vibe was special as people walked up and down to get their steps in for the day. Beirut really did open my eyes up to many different facets of life. Disasters, hope, religion, political strife inequality, wealth, a lack of wealth, crazy traffic, amazing food, the list could go on. However, this city gripped me and I saw so many diverse sights and sounds around the city. The Corniche is a dream of a walk as you soak up the sunset and marvel at the city's beauty. In a weird way, it summarises the complexity of this city. And join me on the next episode as I head south to Sida and Tyr before heading towards the Syrian border to Baalbek. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Please follow and subscribe on my YouTube channel today and please rate and review the podcast on any podcast platform that you use. Thank you.